Welcome to the IDKD refresher series of musculoskeletal diseases. With a large number of people involved in sports activities, muscle injuries are commonly seen at imaging. This case presentation will help you to accurately diagnose muscle injuries in your practice. My name is Rado Sutter and I'm the Chief of Radiology at Balchrist University Hospital. Balchrist University Hospital in Zurich is specialized on diagnosing and treating musculoskeletal diseases. And in my department, we see both a lot of amateur and professional athletes. So I present to you the case of a 36-year-old female extreme marathon runner. What is an extreme marathon? In this case, it means very long distances in the mountains with a lot of uphill and downhill running. The patient presented to my department one day after the race. She had excruciating pain in both her thighs and was barely able to walk. We performed an ultrasound examination and you can see a transverse section of the right thigh with a lot of epiphysteal fluid around the quadriceps femoris muscle but also increased fluid within the muscle itself. So what is our suspected diagnosis? Some form of muscle injury, right? Let's first look at the different types of muscle injury that we can encounter. The first type is indirect trauma. This is the most common muscle injury. Often the myotendinous junction is injured as this is the most vulnerable part during eccentric contraction of the muscle. This was a case of a young ice hockey professional who launched on the ice with resulting sudden pain. At MRI, we see a muscle strain of the gracilis muscle with a partial tear seen nicely at the sagittal T2 and a lot of surrounding hematoma. The next type is contusion, so a direct trauma. This soccer professional received a direct blow during a match. And at MRI, we see intramuscular hematoma of the external of the radial muscle. A common injury in professional athletes is re-injury, such as in this 24-year-old soccer pro. He had a muscle tear two weeks ago and rejoined soccer practice too early after insufficient recovery. Now he presented with acute pain after indirect trauma with re-injury at the same location. At ultrasound, we can see an intramuscular tear of the adductor longus with a large hematoma, which was then followed up by MRI. So, which muscle injuries are clinically relevant? Muscle strains that take longer to heal are grade 2 and 3 with distortion or complete disruption of the muscle architecture. Over 50% of cross-sectional area and extensive longitudinal extension take longer to heal, as does the involvement of the myotendinous junction. Previous injury is an important risk factor for recurrent muscle injury and occurs in up to 15% of injuries. This is a classic complication after blunt trauma. We see a lobulated mass in the vastus lateralis muscle in a soccer player five weeks after trauma. This is not a soft tissue sarcoma and does not need to be biopsied. This is myositis ossificans, a delayed ossification of an intramuscular hematoma with characteristic extensive perilesional edema. The diagnosis was confirmed by the characteristic appearance with peripheral ossification on x-rays. Let's return to our case, the mountain marathon runner with excruciating pain. After ultrasound, we performed an MRI during follow-up. And the MRI shows the true extent of the injury, in this case of delayed onset muscle soreness. We see bilateral muscle hyperintensity on fluid sensitive images in the quadriceps femoris muscle. Delayed onset muscle soreness or DOMS occurs from microstructural muscle injury that is followed by an inflammatory process and subsequent shifts of fluid and electrolytes. There is usually no permanent damage to the muscle function and this patient fully recovered after a couple of weeks. What are the differential diagnoses to delayed onset muscle soreness 
In addition to the different types of muscle injuries we already discussed, I'm showing you a case with a very similar appearance at ultrasound. You can see increased fluid here in this 27-year-old student who fell from a Vespa scooter and suffered a degloving injury of the muscle fascia at the peritrochanteric region. The fluid is actually trapped between two layers of the fascia and we see a different fluid distribution in the supine and standing position. This is a classic case of a morel lavalet lesion. And as the fluid is trapped between the fascia layers, these lesions often persist for a long time and may need to be drained. Let's sum up my case. I showed you delayed onset muscle soreness and we looked at the differential diagnosis of an acute morel lavalet lesion, indirect muscle trauma and re-injury of a muscle. Here are some literature references. And with this, I thank you for your attention. Stay tuned with more IDKD cases to come.